Good afternoon, students. Yes, in the last class, we have discussed the topic that is we were discussing about the different kingdoms under animal kingdom. We have discussed about phylum, Porifera, phylum Celenterata, and small part of phylum Platyhelminthes. In today's class, we shall discuss about the phylum Platyhelminthes. The word platyhelminthes, anything that comes under helminthes, that means that is we are speaking about worms. Where study of worms is also called as helminthology. It is also called as helminthology. That is in simple study of worms. Okay, helminthes. That is why since the organisms belonging to this phylum, they are worms, they are called as platyhelminthes. Now the question is, why they have got the name as platyhelminthes? Since the body of the organism, if we look at the body of the organism here, we have consider this is part view, that is dorsal side and this will be the front view or the ventral side. When we look at the organisms, okay, here the dorsal view and the frontal view. This is an organism, this is the dorsal side, back view and this is the ventral side. When you look at the organism, the body of the organism here is dorsally and ventrally. They have flattened the body. They have dorso ventrally flatten the body. They do not have any extensions. That is why they are called the name as platyhelminthes or you can call them as flatworms. We are studying about phylum platyhelminthes. Helminthes is nothing but worms. Where here, why they have got the name as platyhelminthes? Because when you look at the organism, they are dorsal side and the ventral side, they have a flat body. That is why they have got the name as platyhelminthes or we can call them as flatworms. Okay, we can call them as flatworms. The organism belonging to this phylum are flatworms. Now, coming to their habitat, where do they live? Okay, their habitat. Till now in the last phylum, we have seen the organism is to live in water, it might be fresh water or the marine water. But here, in this case, the organism belonging to platyhelminthes, that is flat worms, they belong, they are endoparasites. I tell you what are endoparasites, but keep in mind, they are endoparasites. Now, what is this endoparasites? I have told you, the habitat, that is, they are endoparasites. Now, come first coming to parasites. First coming to parasites. If any organism is dependent on the other organism for the purpose of nutrition or for the purpose of locomotion, then we call them as parasites. What are parasites? Any organism, organism will be dependent on other organism. Now, for example, lice on the head. Well, they are dependent on us. That means one organism is dependent on the other organism. Such organism we call it as parasite. What are parasites? If any organism is dependent on the other organism, which is dependent, we call them as host body. For example, now human beings, we are the host for the lice. Okay, the lice present on the hair. We are the host body for that lice. If the lies are dependent on us, then we call them as parasites. Now, for what purpose they are dependent? Generally, for the purpose of nutrition, that is for the purpose of food, and also for the purpose of movement, locomotion, will be dependent. 
Now under parasites, generally it is classified into ectoparasites. They are ectoparasites, and then we have endoparasites. We have ectoparasites and endoparasites. Now. Coming to ectoparasite, if the organism that is a parasite, if it is living on the host body, outside the host body, then we call it as ectoparasite. Okay? If the organism or the parasite, if it is living on outside the host body, if it is living outside the host body, then we call it as ectoparasite. If the organism if it is living inside the host body, for example, now if I take a tapeworm, they are present in the intestine of the pig. Okay, that means the so liver flow, they are present in the liver. That means they are present inside the host body. Then we call it as endoparasite. If the organism is living inside the host body, living inside the host body, then we call it as endoparasite. In case of platyhelminthes, the organisms are endoparasite. That means they live inside the host body for the purpose of nutrition and development. Okay. Coming to platyhelminthes, we are speaking about their habitat. What type of habitat they have? They are, they are endoparasite. What is the meaning of endoparasite? Where the organism depends on the host body. What happens? There is an organism and that organism is depending on another organism, the host body. And where are they living? Inside or outside? Since they are endoparasites, they live inside the host body. Okay, this is their habitat. Coming to their basic level of organization. Where under basic level of organization we are studying, they have level of organization, they have type of body symmetry, they will be having type of sea dome, or they have the type of uh, germinal layer. Based on that, the organisms are classified. Now, let's see one by one where under the basic classification, the organism belonging to platyhelminthes, they, they show tissue level of organization. What is, it, what is this tissue level of organization? Here, the organism's body is differentiated into tissues. They do not have a well-developed organ present here. Okay? Here what happens? It is differentiated. The body parts are differentiated into tissues or group of cells which have same structure and function. They together we form a tissue. That is why we say tissue level of organization. Okay, what level of organization they show? They show tissue level of organization. Okay, they have tissue level of organization. Clear? Okay. Now, coming to the next to basic. I have told you, under basic level we have level of organization. What level of organization do they have? They show tissue level of organization. Now the question is body symmetry. Here, in case of platyhelminthes, they show bilateral symmetry. What type of symmetry they show? They show bilateral symmetry. Now what is this bilateral body symmetry? What is bilateral symmetry? When I have told you in the last session itself, what is bilateral symmetry? Consider this is a tapeworm. Tapeworm. When I divide this organism through central axis, okay, if I get identical left and right, then that symmetry is called as bilateral symmetry. The organism belonging to platyhelminthes can be divided into identical left and right. Then we divide them into central axis. That is why we say what type of symmetry do they have or what type of symmetry do body follow? They have bilateral symmetry. Now what is this bilateral symmetry? When we divide an organism through central axis, if it is dividing into identical left and right, 
the body will be, it cannot be divided in this plane, it can be divided only in one plane and when I divide that organism, what I should be getting? I should be getting the left part, the complete left part and which is equal to the right part. Then only I can say they follow bilateral symmetry or they have bilateral symmetry. Is that clear? I have told you their basic level of organization, they follow or they have tissue level of organization and what type of symmetry? They show bilateral symmetry that is when we divide an organism along the central axis it will be divided into left and right. Okay. Then coming to the next, next level of organization coming to the next level of organization uh, next uh, characteristic feature that is based on the uh, silo. What is the silo? Silo is the number the body cavity. The body cavity. Here, since they are flat worms, there is no space between the membranes. In this organism, since they are flat worms, there is no space, there is no body cavity. That is why what type of silo do they have? They do not have a body cavity. If they do not have a body cavity, they are called to be acelomates. They are called to be acelomates. Coming to the next one that is silo. Since here the organisms are flat works, they do not have any space, they do not have any cavity in their body. That is why silo, they have their acelomates. Okay. I have told you the basic level. Coming to the next basic level of organization. Here, the body's germinal layer or the organism's germinal layer is differentiated into three layers. Okay, they are little advanced when compared to the same traits. These are little advanced organism. Then we have seen the body is divided into two germinal layers. That was diploblastic in Porifera and Cylindrata. These are little higher organisms where their germinal layer is differentiated into three layers. Okay. What is this germinal layer? They are differentiated into three layers. If their germinal layer is differentiated into three layers, then we call it as triploblastic organisms. They are triploblastic organisms. Okay. Now, you will be having your curiosity to know which are these three layers under triploblastic, which are the three layers. There are, I have told you their germinal layer as three layer, that is why they are called as triploblastic. Now coming to which are these three layers? Okay, now coming to the three germinal layers. In the last class we have not discussed which are the layers, but here since they are triploblastic, you should know which are the three layers. Coming to the first one, the outermost layer, it is called as ectoderm. The outermost layer is ectoderm and the middle layer we have mesoderm and the innermost layer is endoderm. The inner layer is endoderm. Okay, the outer layer, ectoderm, middle mesoderm and inner endoderm. Okay, that is since they have these three layers, we call them as triploblastic. If the organism has only ectoderm and endoderm, they do not have mesoderm, then we call it as diploblastic. Where phylum porifera and cylindrata, they come under diploblastic organism. From phylum platy and lepis, next all the phylum they come under triploblastic. This is about the basic level of organization. Phylum platy and lepis, they show what level of organization do they show? They show tissue level of organization, they are symmetry, they have bilateral symmetry. That is when we divide an organism through central axis, it will be divided into left and right. Then we have silo. The word they do not have silo, that is why they are acelomates and they are triploblastic, that means they have three germinal layer, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Okay. Now coming to the next one, that is. Among the platy helminthes mainly, these platy helminthes, the 
an organism belonging to platyhelminthes. What type of excretory structure do they have? Okay, in case of platyhelminthes, especially in their body, what, is, what are the extra features they have than the cilin chains? Now, if I say body of an organism, they have hook and sucker. What do they have? They have hook and sucker in their body. Okay. If this is an organism, consider if this is a head region, this is an organism, the pain In their body, take this region, which is called as hook. And they have suckers present. What do they have? Hook and suckers. Okay. Their body consists of hook and sucker. Now, why do they have this hook or this suckers? For what? What purpose? We know they are habitat, they are endoparasites. They are mainly endoparasites. That means they live within the host body or they live inside the host body. For attachment purpose or to hold on, they have this structure called as hook. Okay, for what purpose they have this hook and sucker? First one, hook for the purpose of attachment because they are living inside the host body. Now, if this is the host body, this is the parasite, the endoparasite, it has to hold on. To hold on inside, for that purpose, they will be having hook. Okay? And coming to sucker, what is the meaning of sucker? To suck the nutrients or to absorb the nutrients. Since they are living inside the host body, they do not have a particular mouth or the food is not given to the mouth. That is why to absorb the food, in simple way you have to say, to absorb the food or the nutrients. To absorb the nutrients, they have a structure called as sucker. Okay, to absorb the nutrient, to intake the nutrient from the host body, they consist of structure called as sucker. Okay, and I have told you the body of an organism that is belonging to platy helminthes, they have hook and sucker. This hook, since they are endoparasites, since they are living inside the host body, hook is for the purpose of attachment and sucker is for to absorb the nutrients. Okay, this is about the special structures. Then along with this, in the final platy helminthes, they have a specialized cell called as flame cells. What do they have? They have a specialized cell called as flame cells that helps in excretion. What is excretion? To remove the waste product. Okay. Food, how it will be moving? By the sucker, it will be absorbed, it will be taken out. And for the purpose of excretion, we should be having something. Here, for the purpose of excretion, they have a specialized cell and it is called as flame cells. Okay, they have a specialized cell and it is called as flame cell that is for the purpose of excretion. Okay, this is about phylum platy helminthes. Let me give you two simple examples of platy helminthes. Example of the organism of the platy helminthes are phylum or flat worms. Okay, example we have tape worm. Example, you can give tape worm and liver flow. These are the two examples. That, that is two examples for the organism belonging to phylum platy This example we have tape worm and liver flow. This is about phylum platy helminthes. Very under animal kingdom, we have to study the basic classification. Then we are studying how exactly the animals are classified into different phylums. Where we have studied about phylum Porifera, phylum Cilinterita, and then phylum platy helminthes. Coming to the next phylum, that is a little advanced phylum than the platy helminthes, or the organism which are little highly differentiated, little more differentiated than the platy helminthes. We have phylum Ascalmenthes or Nematoda. Next phylum we have, which is the next phylum? If you want me to repeat this phylum, you can write from your comment section that if you want me to repeat any part of this phylum, phylum platy and menthes, 
If not, we will move to the next pylon. You are asked to prepare the structure of what can occur and in case of excretion, in case of plantain help and tears, hook for the for the purpose of attachment, attachment of organism to host body. What is host body? Other organism. Okay. Hook is for the attachment of organism that is endoparasitic into the host body and the sucker sucker is to absorb the nutrients to absorb the nutrients and few of you, of you have asked that is the specialized cell that is called as flame cells ok, the specialized cells they are called as flame cells and these flame cells they help in the excretion that is to remove the removal of waste product removal of waste product ok, or to remove the waste product ok, thank you ok Okay, hook and sucker hooks for the attachment of organisms to the host body and suckers to absorb the nutrients and flame cell it helps in excretion that is to remove the waste product. Okay, if I am clear, we will move to the next one, next one that is phylum Ascalventis. In your syllabus, you have studied it as phylum nematoda. It can be called as phylum nematodes or ascalmentis. Okay? When you have studied in your high school, you have studied it as phylum nematoda, but it can, it can be called as phylum ascalmentis as well. Okay? Now, coming to ascalmentis, I know also it ends with helminthes. Here also it ends with helminthes. That means the study of worms here or if the worm, the organism belonging to this phylum also are worms. Okay, that is why we call them as ascalmentes. These ascalmentes, that is again which is similar to platyhelminthes, but here since they do not have the flat body, also entry flat body or the type of serum is completely different here that is why they are grouped separately ok or the level of organization is different that is why all the worms cannot be grouped under one phylum they are grouped into two different phylums one is platyhelminthes and one more is ascalmentes which can be called as nematodes or nematoda ok now again this phylum uh, or the organism Belonging to phylum Ascalmentis, they are also called as route worms. What are they called as? They are also called as round worm. Organism belonging to phylum Ascalmentis or Nematoda, they are also called as round worm. Now, why they are called as a round worm? Okay. When we take the cross section of an organism, round verb, when we take the cross section of an organism that appears to be round in structure, 
the cross section of an organism okay when we cut an organism and dissect it and take a cross section the inner organization of the body appears to be round that is why they are called the name as round worm okay organism belonging to phylum ascelmentes or nematoda they are generally called as round worms why they are called it as why we call it as round worm because when we take the cross section of an organism it appears to be round that is why it is called to be round worm now let's see they are habitat in case of ascelmentes they are also parasites habitat they are also parasites that means they are both ecto and endo parasites they are both ecto and endo parasites okay that means they live inside the host body as well as outside the host body okay since they are living both inside and outside the host body we call them as ecto and endo parasites the organism belonging to phylum ascelmentes they are habitat they are both ecto and endo parasite that means they live within the host body and the outside the host body but they are dependent on other organism that is why we call them as ecto and endo parasites now coming to the your basic level of organization basic level since here i have told you they also come under the worm the class the organism they also are worms but they are grouped separately because here the organism belonging to ascelmentes they show organ level of organization which is different from platyhelminthes because in platyhelminthes we have seen they show tissue level of organization so you cannot classify this organism under the as uh, under platyhelminthes because their level of organization is completely different here they show organ level of organization now what is this organ level of organization here different organisms with different organ they are together we forming one uh, here different tissues they together we form an organ and that organ will be having particular function okay that level of organization is called as organ level of organization is that clear now coming to the next one that is your body symmetry which is similar to platyhelminthes that is we have bilateral symmetry we show bilateral symmetry okay that is which is similar to our platyhelminthes what type of symmetry do they show they also they show bilateral symmetry okay then coming to the next one we have discussed they are level of organization that is they show organ level of organization then we have to discuss about their symmetry what is bilateral symmetry when we divide an organism into central axis it will be divided into left and right that type of symmetry we call it as bilateral symmetry then coming to the germinal layer they also are also triploblastic organism which is again similar to platyhelminthes which has three layers outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm okay that is why we call them as triploblastic organism now coming to the next one that is your coelom here in this organism generally the organism either they will be having a body cavity we call them as coelomates okay if they have the body cavity we call them as coelomates if they do not have the body cavity then we call it as acelomates but here in this organism they have false coelom that means they have a body cavity they will be having a body cavity with the small pouches present among them a cavity what it has inside the cavity they will be having the smaller pouches of cells okay that is why we cannot say them true coelom that is why the coelom present here are called as pseudo coelomates the meaning of pseudo coelomates are false cavity okay pseudo coelomate that means they have a cavity but that is not the true cavity they do not have a true space there but instead in that space they may have a group of cells 
Okay, that is why we say pseudo pseudomy or we say false cavity. We say false cavity or pseudo pseudomy. This is about their basic organization. I repeat, phylum platy, ascal pentes, I'm sorry, phylum ascal pentes, again, helmen pentes, that means the organism belonging to the warm city. Here, they are generally, what are they generally called as? They are called as nematodes or nematoda or roundworm. Okay, and uh, why it is called as roundworm? When we take out the cross section, the organism's body appears to be in the round structure, the organization is circular. That is why it is called as round worm. Then they are habitat, they are both, they are living inside the host body and outside the host body. That is why it is called as ecto and endoparasite. Okay, they are both a uh, habitat. They either live inside the body or outside the body. It might be in plants or it might be animals. Okay, anything they can be dependent on. That is their habitat. Then basic level of organization we have seen. What level? Organ level. Next from the tissue level, we have organ level. Then symmetry, they also have bilateral symmetry. That is when we divide an organism, it will be divided into left and right. Then we have triploblastic. What is triploblastic? Again, they have three germinal layer and then pseudocelomates. That means we have a body cavity, but they are not true body cavity. Okay. And these organisms coming to ascal methods, they are also um, especially in case of ascal methods, they cause the disease called as elephantiasis. Okay, especially they cause the uh, organism in case of I have told you they are micro and endoparasites. In the human beings, there is an on the uh, on the worm, on the organism, the ascalmen, nematode called as Ucheria brand coffee, they generally or finally they call they cause elephantiasis. Okay, generally they cause elephantiasis, that is filarial worm, which is present in the intestine. Okay, they may be present in the intestine and this filarial worm they cause elephantiasis. Okay, generally uh, elephantiasis which is caused by the Pylarial worms. And uh, this elephant gases is nothing but enlargement of the legs muscles. Generally causes the infection in the legs. Elephant food, we call it as elephant food. Okay, elephant gases. Okay. Now, along with that, the round worms and the pin worms. You have seen the small white pin worms, generally, which cause infection in the uh, intestine. Okay, generally, we say we take the medicine for the helminthic medicine or the worm, worm medicine. Okay, that is nothing but to treat that pin worm. We call it as the small worm, which is pin worm. Okay, some of the examples for ascal mentis are round worm, that is ascaris. Example for ascal mentis is ascaris. Okay, I repeat the final ascal mentis or nematoda. They are generally called as round worm. Okay, and basic classification we have discussed here. In case of round worm, then in case of uh, round worms, they are mainly cause the disease, right? Elephantiasis. They mean drawbackers, they are endoparasite and they cause disease like elephantiasis. Example for ascal mentis we have ascaris. Ascaris is an example for ascal mentis. Now, if I say the, coming to the body of ascal mentis, if you want to know the structure of ascal mentis, they have an elongated cylindrical body. Sorry, what type of body it has? It has an elongated body which is cylindrical. And and the both the end, if you look at the both the end here, they will be having sharp end and it is called as tapering end. Okay, now I am speaking about ascaris that is round worm. Here, the body of an organism is elongated. What is the meaning of elongated? Long worm. Okay, elongated. And cylindrical. What is the meaning of cylindrical? Cylinder like. Okay, then we have a cylindrical structure. And both the end, if you look at both the end, it is tapering end. Both are having tapering end. Okay, this is about the phylum ascal mentis, a simple phylum ascal mentis or nematode. Now, coming to the next one, that is 
extra phylum we have phylum Annelida. Okay, phylum Annelida. If I'm clear with this phylum, okay, want me to repeat the sea law. Okay, I've asked me to repeat the sea law of this asking mentis. In case of asking mentis, they generally what happens, this is a outer, outer layer, ectoderm, then this is a middle layer, the middle layer, this is ectoderm layer, then this is mesoderm layer, then we have a cavity, then we will be having endoderm. This is endoderm, this is mesoderm, and this is the ectoderm. Now between this endoderm and mesoderm, the cavity, this is endoderm, between the mesoderm and the ectoderm, the cavity is called a zero. Generally it is called as Silo. If they have the silo, then we call it as silo mates. If they do not have the silo, then we call it as e silo mates. But here, in case of uh, ascarment, this here, this cellular layer is not present among the body type. Here, they will be having group of cells, mesodermal cells, arranged in the cavity. That means, here there is no space. The group of cells are arranged in the cavity. That is called as pseudo silo. That means, they have a body cavity. But it is not a true body cavity. Okay, that type of silo are called as pseudo silo or false silo. Okay, that means the organism possesses a body cavity, but it is not lined by a mesoderm. Instead, they will be having smaller group of mesoderm present in the body cavity. Okay, in case of silo mates, they will be having a body cavity, and that body cavity will be lined by the mesoderm. But here it is not having mesodermal lining. Mesoderm is present here and there. That means they have a silo, but it is not a true silo. That is why we call it as pseudo silo means or false cavity. Okay. If I am clear with this, then we'll move to the next two phylum. If you are able to, if you are, if you want me to repeat, you can write it down. Or we'll move to the next two phylum. That is phylum Annelida. Coming to next to phylum, we will discuss about phylum Annelida. Coming to phylum Annelida, here the animals belonging here, well, let's see. Let's discuss about their habitat first. Habitat. Some of the organisms here they are terrestrial, terrestrial, and some are ectoparasites. Okay, what does the meaning of terrestrial? If they are living in the land, we call it as terrestrial, and some are ectoparasites. They live on the Post body, okay, the organism belonging to animals, ectoparasites. They are ectoparasites. Here, the animals, now let's speak about the basic level of organization. Let's speak about the basic level of organization. They have 
organ system level of organization we are having a well developed organ system here different organ together we form an organ system and phylum adelina they have organ system level of level of organization what level of organization they show organ system they have a well developed organ system here in case of phylum annelida they have organ system level of organization then we come into their body symmetry what you know of this organ system i hope you know of this organ system different organs we be having different organs and different organs are interrelated and it forms one organ system the okay, different organs are interrelated to form one organ system and it have a particular function now for example if i take this as digestive system mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine different organ has form one organ system and their function is digestion okay and it's what the organ system level of organization Then we have the symmetry. They show bilateral symmetry. What type of symmetry they show? Bilateral symmetry. That means when we divide an organism among the central axes, we'll be dividing it into identical left and right. That type of symmetry is called as bilateral symmetry. Coming to the germinal layer, they are triploblastic. What are they? Uh, the triploblastic organisms. Okay, the germinal layer is the triploblastic organism. Now, what is the meaning of triploblastic organism? We divide an organism into, and the organism's body is differentiated into three layers: outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and inner endoderm. That is why the organism is called as triploblastic. Coming to coelom. They have a body cavity, and that body cavity is lined by mesoderm. That is why we call it as coelomates. I repeat, they have organ system level of organization. Different organs together we form an organ system, and that organ system will be having particular function. Then symmetry. When we divide an organism through central axis, if it is divided into left and right. Then we call it as bilateral symmetry. If the organism's body has three germinal layer, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Okay, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Then we call it as triploblastic. Coming to coelom, if the organism possesses a body cavity, what do they have? They possess a body cavity. And the criteria here is. The body cavity has to be lined by the mesoderm. Okay, here the organism possesses a body cavity with mesodermal lining. Okay, with the mesodermal lining, then we call them as coelomates. The organism which will be having a body cavity and that body cavity has to be lined by mesoderm. Then we call it as coelomates. What do we call it as? Coelomates. Okay. Now coming to the next one. This is basic level of organization. Coming to the body. What type of body do they have? They also have an elongated body, elongated cylindrical body. The organism belonging to this phylum is also having elongated cylindrical body. And here. The body of an organism. Look at the body of an organism. It is divided into segments. What happens? The body of an organism is divided into segments. How the body of an organism is divided into segments here? It is not only externally. I have told you the body of an organism is divided. Here, the body of an organism is. Externally, that means outside. It is not only externally, externally and internally. What happens? The body is externally and internally divided into smaller segments. They are divided into segments. This type of body is called as segmented body. 
Okay, what happens here? The body of an organism is both externally. What is the meaning of externally? Outside. Internally, inside. If the body of an organism is externally and internally divided into segments, then we call that as segmented body. So what type of body do they have? They have segmented body. What type of body? They have segmented body. Their body is having particular segments. That is, it is externally and internally divided into segments. Now, what is this segment called as? In the annelids or the earthworm, okay, an example for annelid is earthworm. In the annelid or in the earthworm, each segment present here, okay, each segment present here, it is called as metamere. What is it called as? Metamere. It is important in case of annelids, the each ring, each segment is called as metamere. Okay, and in the Greek or in Latin, in this metamere, it is called as, or ring like structure is called as annulus. Ring is nothing but annulus. Since the body of an organism has ring like structure, they have got the name as annulita. That means annulus like structure, ring like structure. That is why they have got the name as annulus or annulidins. Okay, example. For the phylum annelida are which are the examples which worms you can see in the segmented body? Earthworm. Example we have earthworm. Have you heard about leech? Leeches. Okay, which is blood sucking. Okay, which sucks the blood. Generally, which is present in the plantation area, the forest or in the plantation area. Between the, the what happens? There is a small organism. Which, is, which, is, which sucks the blood, which will be generally attached to the host body and it starts sucking the blood. We call it as leech. These organisms they come under phylum Annelida. Either way, under phylum Annelida, we have the organism belonging to phylum Annelida. They are habitat, generally they are terrestrial and few are aquatic as well. Okay, few are aquatic as well. Okay, that means they can live in the water, some can live in the land and some can live in the water. They have basic level of organization, they show organ system level of organization and symmetry, they show bilateral symmetry and germinal layer, they show triploblastic and coelom. They have a body cavity which is lined by mesoderm, that is why we call them as coelomates. And Coming to their body structure, they have an elongated cylindrical body which is having number of segments. That is why we say segmented body. Now what is the segmented body? If the body is externally and internally divided, then we call it as segmented body. Then the body of an organism has a ring or annulus. Ring or annulus and that is why they have got the name as Annelida. Annulus, that is why they have got the name as Annelida. An example I have given as earthworm and leeches. In today's class, we have studied about three phylums. That is phylum Platyhelminthes, phylum Ascenminthes and phylum Annelida. Okay. There are few more phylums to be studied. These phylums, whatever we are discussing now, they come, they come under invertebrates. There are nearly 10 phylums under invertebrates. Among this, totally we have completed 5. Phylum Porifera, Phylum Cylindrata, Phylum Platyhelminthes, Phylum Ascenminthes and Phylum Annelida. In the next class, we will be studying about Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata. Okay, these are the phylums that has to be covered in the next class. If you have any doubt in today's class, you can ask. I will be explaining or else we will wind up with today's session. And in the next class, we will study about the rest of the phylums. If you have any doubt, you can ask.
Weinberg ist erschienen.